Hello, I'm just going to work through um, the third forms task uh, from the course, uh, Jackson Carpets. Uh, um, we've got this wireframe here, it's creating the form again. If you're wondering why it's called Jackson Carpets, by the way, it's a long and tedious story and, and not that interesting, sorry. Um, anyway, what have we got? We've got a form with a drop down menu, a couple of number inputs and a submit button. And as before, I've prepared this earlier, so I can just take you through it quickly, explain a couple of things. Um, and you can see I've set it up beautifully for the reveal. It's quite exciting, isn't it? Right, title, yeah, obviously, Nat5 stuff. Okay, um, style, yeah, that's Nat5 stuff, just um, using the information given there. And I've made a slight change to what I did in task two, um, because we don't just have input elements we've got select elements, that is the drop down menu, it's a select element and so I've set it as well to display block and with a with a lower margin using my grouping selector there, the comma um, and so that's just to make it a bit easier to, to lay out I suppose, look a bit prettier right, um, let's look in the body so we've got, can I zoom in on this? oh yeah, I'll zoom in a bit more with the typo, right um, so we've got the heading and the, the opening paragraph, fair enough. And then the the form semantic element. So this is what groups all of the, the various form elements together, the input elements together. So in there, um, now you'll notice on this one, on the last one, if I just, we were told what the action of the, the submit button was, what it was going to activate. This one we haven't been told, so we just leave that. Um, so I don't need to put in action up here but remember what you learn about that at advanced tire but that basically tells uh, tells the browser what the submit button is going to activate okay so uh form first of all we've got this drop down menu type of carpet and imperial twist blah blah so the way we do that i've got a little label here now again um labels not actually uh, a higher thing um, you can just do like a little paragraph or something but why not just do label that's what it's for um, the the select element this is what you actually need to do a drop down menu so it's a bit like when you do lists unordered lists and ordered lists at five um, we've got a select element that basically says here's a drop down menu and then inside it for each item you've got options and there are the four options now, I've given this an ID just so I can link the label to it, but it's not required here. I've also I've missed out here a couple of things which I'll just explain. We did these, uh, these are in the examples that you're given. We can put a name in, some like carpet type would make sense here for the name. Now, we don't actually need that unless you go to advanced tire and we start form handling that is dealing with the input from the form um, and, and we refer to we refer to the various input elements by their name so you could put a name in but it's it's not required okay you don't need it for hire also the options again for when we actually get into form handling uh, advanced hire or if you want to uh, learn about this more we can do um, value in each of the options and you know I can write imperial twist whatever but this again is just I can give each option a value and that's just to do with how the, the form handling code actually checks what we've picked okay so don't don't stress about that I can put those in I just haven't bothered here basically select and then inside it options very similar to UL and then li tags inside it similar idea okay what have we got next a couple of number inputs they've both got a minimum and maximum value so here they are again i've used a label here um and we just say input type equals number that's how you get a number input a numerical input and then we've got some validation min 
and max to set it to 1 and 25 as the range. Uh, in an exam, you may well have to, you know, write a line of code like that and get it exactly right. You have to know that it's min and max rather than minimum and maximum. You have to know it's type equals number, okay? And of course, a very similar thing for uh, for the width. Um, these, as well, you know, we could put names for them. You put a name, you know, name equals length, name equals width. Um, in each of these, but we don't need it at higher. We don't need it until we're actually having to do some form handling. And finally, we've got the submit button. So input type equals submit, and then we need to give it a value. That is what it says on the button. And of course, what happens when the user clicks the button? Well, in this case, nothing. But I just noticed my indentation's a bit off. Um, but if we put an action attribute in here, that basically tells it what file to go and run when we click the submit button. So let's just check that. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying check it. I've checked it already. I know it works. But you can see what it looks like. And remember, all this sort of code, the, the form, this is sort of stuff you're going to have to do in, uh, in an exam situation. You have to be able to reel this off a bit. So there we go. There are my options. And... I can type numbers in here, but I can just use arrows as well. You can see it won't go below 1 because that's set as a minimum, and it won't go above 25. Okay, and when I do this, nothing. Well, actually, it reloads the page, so. uh, but it would, you know, activate uh, some sort of form handling file. Okay, hope that helps a little bit. See ya.